I'm Phil Gale. Welcome to the programme. The UN Security Council is trying to reach a compromise to pause the fighting in Gaza. A vote is expected shortly. An initial draft resolution called for an urgent and lasting cessation of hostilities to allow the unimpeded access of humanitarian aid. Negotiators are now seeking a compromise acceptable to the US, which has blocked previous calls for a ceasefire. International pressure on Israel to end hostilities has grown as Gaza faces a deepening humanitarian crisis. Our correspondent, Janelle Dumoulin, joins us from Washington. Welcome, Janelle. Why does this vote keep getting postponed? Indeed, now this vote has been postponed from yesterday to this morning to noon to mid-afternoon, now to late afternoon Eastern time. It might not be the last postponement, uh, hard to tell at this stage. But essentially, negotiators are looking for language that would keep the U.S. from vetoing a ceasefire resolution in Gaza. Now, if you recall earlier this month, the U.S. did just that. It vetoed a resolution in contrast to the other UN Security Council members who overwhelmingly supported the resolution. But the U.S. position has always been that a ceasefire only helps Hamas. However, this time around, although the White House has said that it can't support any reference to a cessation of hostilities, it has a pushed for watered down language calling for the suspension of hostilities. Now, this latest draft resolution that was made available had both phrases in it. So first it called for the urgent suspension of hostilities and then urgent steps to be taken towards the sustained cessation of hostilities. But this word cessation, it remains a sticking point for U.S. negotiators. Another sticking point is that the U.S. wants to see text in the resolution specifically condemning Hamas uh, for its actions on October 7. The text did not have that. It had a more general condemnation of terror terrorist acts in the world. But especially the negotiators negotiating on the behalf of the Arab states, uh, they've said that they don't want to introduce any more changes in the draft unless the U.S. promises not to veto. And that is how we got to the waiting game that we find ourselves in now. Right. And so the, the, we have sides that, that seem quite dug in uh, and the U.S. being the holdout. What are the chances that the U.S. will vote in favour of something in the end? Well, the protracted nature of these negotiations kind of make it hard to tell. On the one hand, as you say, it shows that there's a really big gap to bridge between especially the Arab negotiators and the U.S. negotiators. On the other hand, the fact that they are talking and it's taking this long, that could also mean that the U.S. is willing to negotiate at least on some points. Remember that you know, the U.S.'s options here aren't limited to voting in favor or vetoing. The U.S. could also abstain. And because you only need nine votes and no vetoes for the resolution to pass, that would then be a scenario where this resolution passes. And just the fact that the U.S. has indicated a little bit of flexibility now with regard to the language, is already that already represents some movement from its previously very, very tightly held position. And that, in turn, could reflect growing impatience with Israel. Uh, let's not forget that pressure is mounting on the Biden administration to push Israel to do more to protect civilians. And as uh, the death toll in Gaza approaches 20,000, according to the Hamas-run health ministry, it's clear that U.S. urging isn't doing that much. And the U.S. is now in a position where it really has to review all the options it has on the table. Okay, thank you for that, Janelle. Janelle uh, Dumoulin in Washington. Well, the Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza says at least 100 Palestinians have been killed by the latest Israeli airstrikes in the last day. Several countries, including Germany, classify Hamas as a terrorist organisation. Entire buildings reduced to rubble in Rafah. Many civilians were killed in the strike. Despite the city's designation as a safe zone by Israel. A survivor pulled from the rubble mourns her younger sister 
and says she narrowly escaped death herself. A wall collapsed towards me. There was maybe just an inch left between me and the wall. I held it there, it was so heavy. I started screaming for help, hoping someone, anyone could hear me. After being freed from the rubble, another Palestinian woman is taken to Al Nasser Hospital, where she consoles surviving family members. Wrapped in white are the bodies of her two grandchildren. We were sleeping safely in our home. Those are kids, kids and us women. There was no one else. My two grandkids were killed. Amira here, she was just two weeks old. Her birth wasn't even registered yet. She doesn't even have a birth certificate. Palestinians here say they are left to deal with the insufferable pain of loss alone. Straight to our correspondent, Rebecca Ritters in Jerusalem. Welcome, Rebecca. Uh, if Israel's uh, President Herzog uh, says his country is ready for another humanitarian pause, people are bound to ask, well, why is the fighting continuing? Well, Phil, I can only assume that the fighting is continuing because Israel hasn't met its military aims yet, those military aims of eliminating Hamas. It is, so it is promised it is going to continue until those aims are met. And we know that, of course, the fighting, we did see the fighting stop for several days for that temporary ceasefire to allow for the exchange of hostages. But those negotiations broke down and since then the negotiations haven't been going on. As you rightly mentioned there, Israelis, uh, Israel pres Israel's president, Isaac Herzog, uh, has said that Israel would be willing, ready to go back to the negotiating table. And over the weekend there were reports that Israeli negotiators and Qatari negotiators met in Norway to discuss the resumption of those talks and that that will continue. We're seeing the US Defence Secretary uh, Lloyd Austin now in Qatar also trying to, to get those talks back up and running. But so far uh, they haven't begun. And we've heard from the other side there has to be somebody to negotiate with and Hamas saying that they're not willing to come to the negotiating table until there is a complete ceasefire. So at the moment, uh, those talks stalled uh, and, and not looking to resume anytime soon, though we know that in the past uh, they were also from both sides saying that they weren't going to join the talks and in the end they did and they were successful in getting out more than 100 hostages and uh, releasing also some Palestinian prisoners and seeing a pause in that fighting. So the hope still remains that that will continue again soon, but at the moment we're just seeing the fighting continue. So if no pause in fighting, uh, is Israel likely to scale back its ground offensive as the United States has been calling for? We've certainly seen no sign of that uh, or any even indication from Israel that they're willing to do that. We know that the fighting continues. We're not, international journalists are not on the ground. We're not able to see exactly what is going on. We have to take uh, accounts, media accounts from, from, the, from the ground, from local reporters and also what we're hearing from the Israeli military. Uh, and from all accounts, the fighting continues. We know that airstrikes uh, killed... Uh, 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 13 people in a strike in Jabalia camp, that's in the very north of the Strip. We also know that 28 Palestinians were killed in the south in an airstrike and that a hospital in the north was also raided by ground troops. We know that the ground uh, operation continues. So uh, definitely no look of a let up, but as you mentioned, the US really pushing for Israel to move to another phase of this war, a less intensive phase as they call it. They're really uh, urging Israel to try to diminish the civilian casualties, to diminish the amount out of Palestinians that are dying. We know that the death toll is nearly at 20,000. Uh, so, you know, a huge amount of people dying in the effort to eliminate Hamas and the US really pushing for Israel to look towards a more targeted approach to try and put in small specialised teams that will go into the cities and, and target specifically Hamas leaders. And, and Rebecca, uh, the Israeli army uh, says it has suspended several reservists after a video showing them mocking Palestinian detainees was circulated online. What more can you tell us? Well, it's not the first video of its kind that we've seen circulating, Phil. Since the beginning of this war, there have been numerous videos of 
IDF brutality and IDF humiliation that have been circulated oftentimes on the soldiers' own social media accounts, that they're actually, uh, you know, uh, like presenting this themselves. Uh, on this occasion, and we've seen in other occasions earlier in the week, also in Janine, there were soldiers that went into the mosque in Janine and, and were singing Hanukkah songs over the loudspeaker. They were also reprimanded uh, and taken out of uh, service. That situation is being investigated. And this, uh, this new video that has emerged showing uh, the IDF soldiers sitting there with some Palestinians bound and blindfolded on the ground, uh, smoking shisha and eating chips and laughing about what they hope for Gaza. Uh, that is the latest video to cause an uproar. And uh, as you rightly mentioned, that the IDF have, uh, they are investigating the situation and they told DW that the behaviour of those soldiers in the videos is deplorable. Uh, and they said that it stands in stark contrast contrast to the values of the IDF, the Israeli military, and that there will be a disciplinary hearing and the reserve duty soldiers that were on, uh, that were in that video were suspended until further notice. So they're definitely at least trying to take these uh, accounts very, very seriously, um, but we don't know exactly what will happen to these soldiers, whether, the, whether there really will be a major investigation or whether this sort of presents some kind of culture within the Israeli military that they're sort of tacitly allowing this. But certainly these incidences are being investigated and, and the soldiers being potentially punished for these acts. Thanks for that, Rebecca. Rebecca Ritter's in Jerusalem. Now let's pick up some of those points with uh, Doran Spielman, who uh, speaks for the IDF, the Israeli military. Well, welcome to DW. We just heard there from Rebecca about the possibility of Israel uh, Defence Forces taking a more targeted approach. Is that something you're looking at and what would that actually look like? Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, from the very beginning, we've tried to be uh, very targeted and very precise in what we're doing. What we have to understand is that we're dealing with perhaps the most difficult uh, urban landscape that has been approached from a military perspective, perhaps in the world. You're dealing with very close alleyways, buildings very closely situated next to each other, and Hamas which has embedded themselves amidst those civilians and are keeping them there. And so this is an almost an incredibly difficult battle for anyone to fight, certainly for the idea of the fight. And despite all of this, we are trying with our aerial support to gather intelligence. We try to choose our munitions very carefully. We have called off numerous flights and we're open to ideas on how to do this better. OK, so However, can I, can, can I just ideas... interrupt you there? So does that mean that um, you're going to proceed as carefully as you already have? Or does that mean that when um, the US uh, Defence Secretary says you can do this in a more targeted way, in an even more targeted way, that he's talking nonsense? Look, we are always open to ideas. Uh, certainly from uh, Lloyd Austin, who's the US Defence Secretary, has an enormous amount of experience, as do the generals that are leading Israel, on how to be more precise when you're dealing with this type of difficult urban landscape. You know, we also heard uh, from the defense uh, ministry, the defense uh, secretary spokesman, uh, Kirby, who said just the other week that he doesn't know if even the U.S. would take the precautions that Israel's taking to try to protect civilian life. I mean, again, with the, the, at the end of the day, you're dealing with Hamas, who is purposely holding these people hostage, their own civilians, and putting them in the line of fire. Okay. If anyone has an idea of how to do this better, we want to know, because that's our goal. You say you're open to suggestions. OK, I'll play you a short clip now of comments from the US Defence Secretary and your own Defence Minister, and then perhaps get your reaction. Soon, we will be able to, to distinguish between different areas in, in Gaza, in every area. Uh, where we achieve our mission, we will be able to uh, transition gradually uh, to the next phase and start working uh, on bringing back local population. We also have some great thoughts about um, how to transition from high-intensity operations to a lower-intensity and more surgical operations. OK, so Doran Spielman, you, you, you said uh, more surgical operations is something you can look at, but no changes yet. Let's pick up the, your defence um, minister's comments about the 1.9 million Palestinians who are displaced in I Gaza. Want, I, I Does that, do wait, 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 I'll ask my question and then you can come back to me. So we have nearly 2 million Palestinians displaced in Gaza. 
Does that mean that many of them, from what we just heard from your defence minister, does that mean many of them will soon be able to return to the rubble of their former homes? First of all, I want to correct something that you said. I am not saying that nothing has changed up till now. I never said those words. What I am saying is that we're dealing with incredibly difficult fighting in an incredibly difficult, difficult urban setting. One of the things that we've done, we've provided proof, as I mentioned earlier, is that we've called off aerial attacks, specifically because we recognize that there are civilians in that area. However, at the end of the day, Israel is an autonomous, sovereign country. Our first role is to protect Israeli civilians. In order for Israeli civilians to go to sleep at night, and I think the same would be true of England, Germany, France, or America, or any other country in the world, they would not tolerate a massive terrorist entity that is calling for their destruction to exist. So Hamas has to be destroyed. How they're going to be destroyed in the time frame, we are constantly flexible and constantly trying to learn okay. how to do this better. None but of that ultimately the goal is to the destroy them. I, I asked you. Um, let's move on, though, because I'd like your reaction to this latest video that has surfaced on social media. It shows Israeli soldiers in the West Bank laughing and eating snacks in a room with at least seven detained and blindfolded Palestinians. How did this video come about and what do you think of the behavior of your soldiers? The, I thought you were going to play the video. In lieu of playing the video, what I can tell you is that, again, I would have to see the video that you're speaking about in unconfirmed video. Here we go, okay. So, your reaction? Again, I can barely see what's happening in that video, and the video is unconfirmed. And I, from what I understand, you're 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 perhaps trying to speak about the behavior of IDF troops. IDF troops, we have a very strict code of conduct, and anybody who violates that code of conduct is held up to a very high standard. I think it's extremely important to not lose sight of where we're going with this. If IDF troops don't act correctly, they're reprimanded. I, uh, can, Hamas can I, fighters uh, are told to rape, kill, and maim Israeli civilians. They are holding right now 129 Israeli hostages, and I haven't and heard you a, mention anything about and this. Well, because I'm not talking to Hamas, Hamas, I'm talking to an IDF and therefore spokesman. Therefore, I would really think that the, IDF the world, including yourself, would focus on the, video. the so behavior of Hamas again, terrorists please. that are raping, killing, and not even giving food to these people, as opposed to Israeli soldiers, 350,000 of which, what I see in that video is Israeli soldiers sitting around with detainees on the ground. I don't know what to make of it. I do right. know what to make of Hamas terrorists. All right, and, and, and if I had a spokesperson from Hamas, I would be asking them. I'm asking you, because you're from the IDF, about a, a, a video that the IDF has confirmed is genuine. Uh, you said that, that, as far as you can tell, um, this falls short of what you would expect from your soldiers. But the people would look at this and note that this is just one of several videos and images that have emerged in recent weeks showing IDF soldiers abusing or humiliating detained Palestinians. And then last week, IDF soldiers shot and killed Israeli hostages who were believed at that time to have been waving a red flag. And the question becomes, are your soldiers out of control? Again, I, am first of all, did not say that this video represents anything because I don't know that video. It has not been confirmed by the IDF, nor am I able to understand the what's happening there except a bunch of guys DW. sitting around with people sitting around and detainees on the ground. Now, IDF soldiers are detaining Hamas terrorists who are trying to kill them at all times. And as I mentioned to you earlier, the IDF has a very high level of integrity that it demands. And of the 350,000 soldiers who are now in reserves that were called into reserves as a result of an imminent threat against the Israeli population, if any of them are out of control or act incorrectly, they're called to task for it and they are punished. However, I'm trying to find out 
How are we can, are we looking at this as some type of contrasting to the behavior of a murderous terrorist regime? No, we're not. Because I'm not that, seeing that, any that, balance don't of what you're saying. Let me just stop you there because we're not comparing question, and contrasting. And I actually would love to hear we are not Hamas comparing on your and show. contrasting anything. Uh, Doran uh, Spielman. Okay. What we are it's doing, what I am doing, is speaking to you as a representative of the IDF about the activities of the IDF. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good day. You too.